Thanks, Lauren. Good morning. Welcome to the first OSA office hours for this school year. We are glad you're able to join us this morning. As you know, uh, we have resumed our DAC Digest distribution a month or so before. Uh, we request you to please read them and share the important details and updates regarding assessment with all your stakeholders who have a role to play with assessment. We have also announced the press release date of October 2nd through the DAC Digest last week. A talking point embargoed resource document will be released shortly in a day or so to help you with your media release. And we also want to extend our thanks to all the stakeholders um, who have participated in uh, the forward exam item review and ACT science specifications development, cut score validation meetings, and PLD development, uh, performance level descriptors development, and third party alignment study. Um, so it's amazing that all these educators came during the summer and helped us with all of these development activities. Um, so at this time, I am going to turn to our program coordinators to share information specific to um, each assessment. Good morning. This is Allison O'Hara. I'm the forward exam coordinator. We don't have a lot of information to cover today, just a few reminders. First, we want to thank everyone who completed the end of testing survey back in May after you finished the forward testing. We really do read through all of those results, and we're trying to incorporate your feedback um, into changes that we can make for the upcoming year. So we appreciate that, and we really appreciate you also when we kind of send out shorter surveys that you reply back and let us know your thoughts, because we need your input to always try and make things better. The 2018 test results are available. They are electronically available in eDirect, so you can print out PDFs of the student reports. You also, in eDirect, you have a large CSV file of all of your student data at the district level of last, last spring's test results, and then you have the hard copy. Um, those were shipped to your districts back in July. So hopefully all of you have distributed the student ISRs to parents, and your school and district level results are embargoed until um, the press release, which is coming up next week. For um, currently, there's not a lot for you to do with eDirect, but you can log into eDirect if you had permissions um, from last year. You can still log in with those, and now is a good time to clean up any users that are currently listed that have access to prior year's administration and data that no longer work in your district or that, that are, they might be in your district, but they don't have a need to access those data anymore. You want to go in and inactivate any individuals um, in eDirect who, who don't need to see that data, and you can do that now. And our first training in preparation for the forward exam next spring will be a district technology coordinator training, and that is planned for November 14th. It will be a webinar uh, similar to the same format we had last year. Um, your district technology coordinators, if you haven't had a change in that position from last year, they still have access um, to eDirect last, that they had last year. That same access still works for them to be able to get in and download or view any of the software that they want to. So if they want to start doing that soon, they can, but they don't need to. And um, Everyone should have access, though, by November 14th. All right. Good morning, everyone. This is Jennifer Bell, and I'm going to talk you through the ACT Work Keys and Aspire update. Um, so on the screen here, you see the 2019 test dates. As in past years, for grade 11, there are three test dates for ACT and Work Keys, and the tests are administered back-to-back -back, um, on back-to-back -back days. One thing to note is for the initial test dates, February 20th for ACT and February 21st for work keys, in 2019, that's a Wednesday and a Thursday. Then you'll see for the makeup and emergency test days, it's a Tuesday, Wednesday. So just pay attention to that. Um, another item to note is 
again, like last year, schools are expected to test on the initial test date for ACT unless there's a school closure or um, weather emergency. Um, and then use the makeup day. The emergency test date is, again, only for if there are weather emergencies or other incidents where students aren't able to test during the initial or makeup test phase. Um, but for the majority of your school-wide testing, you should be using February 20th. Now, for work keys, you can choose whether February 21st or March 13th is your initial work keys test date. So if schools or districts are choosing not to have ACT and work keys on back-to-back -back days, they may choose February 20th for their initial ACT date and March 13th for their initial work keys date. And in a couple slides, I'll talk about how to do that. Oh, there's a question on the screen. Is there a reason that ACT was switched to a Wednesday and a Thursday? Um, that was ACT's decision. I believe it has to do with uh, religious holidays on the calendar. Um, but ACT provides the dates to the state. We do have the 2020 dates posted on the website, and those are back to Tuesday, Wednesday in 2020. Um, just also to take note of the accommodations testing windows are two weeks in length um, for the initial accommodations testing window. There is a makeup and emergency accommodations testing window. Those windows are five, uh, five days in length, and they should be used in rare cases like absence or long-term illness that occurs during the entire initial accommodations testing window, and those accommodations request deadlines still apply for the makeup and emergency accommodations testing windows, but they are there if students miss that entire two-week window. Okay. From Nick, another question. If a district chooses the makeup date for work keys, does the emergency date become the makeup date? Yes. So if a school decides to test um, initially for work keys on March 13th, your makeup day for work keys would be April 3rd. ACT Aspire, grades 9 and 10, here is the testing window, April 8th through May 10th. And we will have schedule of events coming for ACT work keys and Aspire. We will post those in mid-October, and we'll also make sure they're linked in the DAC Digest. And tasks will begin in November. Um, so to give you a preview of what will be coming next for ACT and work keys, so in no November, school test coordinators will manage schools' test participation. And that means test coordinators will be selecting test dates and ordering materials in Pearson Access Next. That's the test administration portal. Um, so that's where you'll select what your work keys test date is going to be if you're going to do February or March. And you have to select your test dates for both ACT and then switch to the work keys side of the portal and select for work keys. This is very important because ACT and work keys materials are specific to each test date. So you can't hold on to your February materials and use them in March. You've got to select the materials for the correct test date that you're using. We'll send more instructions out about this. They'll come in the DAC Digest. We'll start that biweekly ACT test coordinator email in October, and ACT sends instructions as well. At this point, you can work on updating contact information. We've talked about submitting your DAC forms by October 10th. We will use the updated DAC list to um, populate Pearson Access Next with the district test coordinator contacts. Then the uh, DACs will be responsible for updating test coordinator information in Pearson Access Next. If you need help with that, let me know. I'm happy to help. And then in Aspire, um, anyone who has administrator status in Aspire, including DACs or school test coordinators, should be able to update the um, permissions for users in the Aspire portal. So if you could go ahead and Go into the Aspire portal and remove access for individuals who are no longer employed at your school or district. Um, that would be very helpful to us to clean up that portal and make sure folks who shouldn't have access anymore don't. Hi, I'm Jesse Roberts here to talk about access. Um, as you probably know, it's our early assessment of the year, so uh, we've got a lot to, to start going into. Uh, you probably have noticed if you've gone to the WIDA website that it's brand new. Um, all the old accounts have been retained. But the major change is they've separated their um, testing materials from their more public materials, and the testing materials are behind the login. 
So if you have staff who are accessing the website without a login, they may actually need a login at this point. Um, you can add them within the WIDA portal, or you can uh, point them to WIDA, and WIDA can make accounts for them. In the, um, behind the login, there's now a download library, and that's housing a large amount of WIDA's material. So if you have staff that are confused about where to find things, more than likely it's hidden behind the download library. Um, the nice thing with WIDA is they now have a link to the WIDA AMS from the main WIDA page. So when you go to log in, you have an option of logging into the WIDA's, WIDA's portal or to the WIDA AMS. Um, speaking of the WIDA AMS, this slide's uh, now a, like a day or two out of date, but uh, new schools and DACs were already added to the uh, WIDA AMS. And you should have gotten accounts, uh, emails talking if you have a new account telling you that it's new, or if you have an existing account saying that it's been updated for this year. Um, uh, like, um, like ACT, if you've got new staff, they may need to be added. And if you've got staff who have left, it would be really helpful if you could inactivate them. Um, I wanted to make sure you're aware of central office services. We did a bit of a push of this for forward, but it's starting to pick up speed. Um, it is a drop-in replacement for the TSM. What's nice about COS is that it's one install for all DRC tests rather than a separate TSM for each one. Uh, DRC is going to be supporting the TSMs through this school year, but after that, transitioning to central office services and discontinuing the TSM. So this is the last year to use a TSM. Um, it was released a little late last year, and so we weren't able to jump right into it on access testing, but we had a couple brave districts who went for it, and it worked pretty well. By the time we got to forward, we had a lot of districts using central office services, and it seemed to work fairly well. Um, if you have it installed right now, you can go and just toggle on access, uh, access in the WIDA screener, and those should auto-update when um, as material comes in. And if you don't have it and are looking for it, it's in the eDirect portal. Uh, DRC is going to be doing a big push with training and documentation in November, and at that point we'll have a lot more information about how to install it and how to configure it. What's important to know is that WIDA's got 40-plus states and territories, and they are not deciding to roll this out consortium-wide this year. Um, so all of their materials for this year, um, their technical guides, are going to reference using the TSM. Because there are a bunch of states that are what they call dual DRC states, where they're using DRC for the content assessment and WIDA's test, um, they've opted to allow those states to use COS if they want to. Um, WIDA has helped us is going to just forward on calls to DRC, and DRC really has to be responsible for the documentation and training. Next year, WIDA will transition over to the central office services and have that updated in all their documentation. We just wanted, wanted you to be aware of this. It's optional which one you choose at this point, and pick the one that you're more comfortable with. Um, if it's already installed and you used it for forward, um, yeah, just spool that um, server back up, and you can go in and configure the access um, configure the access in WIDA screener um, packages, and it should auto-download, and you should be good to go. It's really much easier than having the multiple TSMs. So um, just wanted to sort of dive into the new test year. Um, and Nick, in song, the COS is for our GTC? Correct. Um, it's um, generally the tech coordinator that's going to make that install. It's a central server install, and then you link all of your testing devices up to it. Yep. Um, so in October, um, you have the option to upload private school pre-ID files for, um, for access. So if you've got private school students testing, um, you can hop into the WIDA AMS, create those upload files. You can either do it as the district or enable those permissions for each private school. Um, you will want to make sure that by the time we get to the end of October, your SIS is updated because we are going to be pulling from WISE data for the public school pre-ID file. So on November 1st or 2nd, we'll pull that file. If everything is up to date and pushed to WISE data by 1031, then all those students will get stickers for booklets and materials automatically ordered. Like last year, we're going to have um, quite a bit of overage to make sure that you've got enough materials on hand for testing. Good morning. This is Mike PC, and I'm going to be um, talking to you about uh, updates with the DLM assessment. Um, just a reminder, the uh, districts have received a PDF of the student's summary report, performance profile, and learning profile uh, through Kite Educator Portal, and you can go in and download them and use them to help you plan your uh, year for the students. Um, the districts have also received an electronic download through Educator Portal, which is a CSV file, so you can download that 
and upload it into your systems, and it's also available to you through WiseDash. All right, um, new this year, uh, DLM has revamped the educator portal. It uh, was formerly called Kite Client. Now we're going to refer to it as Educator Portal. Uh, there is a new web address for it, so I have provided that um, on, the, on the slides here. Uh, if you have trouble accessing it, please ask me. Um, when you go into the old address, it will direct you to the new uh, link. Uh, with that, there is also a new student portal this year, so you are going to need to download the new student portal. So the old student portal will not work this year. You do need to download the new student portal. Um, some of the key features of it is it's easier to navigate. Um, and one of the extracts that you can get is the user extract, and that will tell you now whether the user is a new user or a returning user, which will help you um, identify which Moodle training uh, they are going to need to go through. And speaking of Moodle training, um, those are available now, so you can begin uh, the training at, at any time. Also new this year, um, DLM is providing four webinars on assisting uh, educating the students um, that are taking the DLM. And they had the first one on September 18th, and it was pretty well attended, and it worked pretty well, except they found out that um, Chromebooks are not working very well with the Skype for Business, so they do have some recommendations if you want to attend these live um, and you're using a Chromebook. Uh, you do need to download an app for it, although these do not always work, so the best option is to try to use a desktop or a laptop with Windows 10, or they do provide the PDF uh, of the PowerPoint slides beforehand and you can call in. If you want to check it out, they do have uh, the September 18th one posted on the Dynamic Learning Maps Professional Development site, and the next one is coming up on October 23rd. The format is going to be a 15-minute overview and then a 30-minute live question and answer session, so you can speak directly with the members of DLM. Good morning. This is Angela Duga. I'm the State Coordinator for NAEP and International Assessment. This is just a reminder of the NAEP testing that's happening this school year. The test window is the last week of January through the first week of March. We're doing grades 4, 8, and 12, reading math and science with some vocabulary. There's some special studies that some schools will participate in. Um, they're listed there. There's, a, there's an additional one called the Extended Student Questionnaire. If your school um, is participating in it, you will learn more about it from the Nate Field staff. These are the international assessments that some of the schools in the states are participating in this year. PISA and IELS are starting soon in October, and Tim is taking place next spring. And here's the communication that we've sent out for NAEP and TIM. The other international assessments, the field staff are already in contact with the schools. Um, May and June, we sent out letters. Last week, uh, packets went out to all the schools um, selected for NAEP. And I sent an email to DAX about how to register for MyNAEP. Later this fall, there will be another set of mailings to TIM schools with information about registering for MyTIM. And to all the high schools participating in NAEP, there will be additional information about the high school transcript study. Uh, th these are the pre-assessment tasks that NAEP schools are starting to complete. We already have about 20% of the schools who have completed this first task of um, registering on MyNAEP and then providing the school information. The deadline for that is October 15th. Uh, the rest of the tasks take place mostly in December and January, and they're listed in more detail on MyNAEP and DACs can register for MyNAEP. They have a separate registration ID that was in the email I sent you last week, and you can monitor your school's progress on all these tasks or um, help out with some of them as well. And new this year, well, we, we piloted it last year, and we're doing it full state this year, there will not be any single school e-filing, so schools do not need to submit their student lists in October. We'll be doing that at the state level, and we'll pull from WISE data, which is fed by your student information system. So we're just asking that you make any updates to that by the end of October, and we will submit your lists for you. Good morning. I'm Dwayne Dorn, and I will be talking about the reading readiness requirements. So the reading readiness requirements remain in effect for the 
18-19 school year. Districts will be required to screen all four-year-old kindergarten through second grade students at least once during the school year. Districts are free to choose any screener which they deem to be appropriate, provided it assesses phonemic awareness and letter sound knowledge. Schools are required to report the results of screening to parents and guardians. Uh, students who are identified as being at risk of reading difficulty shall be provided with interventions or remedial reading services. EPI will continue to reimburse uh, districts for expenses incurred during the 2018-19 school year. Uh, we will uh, do this reimbursement in June of 2019. And more information can be found at those links on screen. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at your convenience. Hi, I'm Dana Summerfeld, and I'd like to just spend a couple minutes uh, talking about some new things that are going on here. One is the development of assessment and data literacy modules. These will be um, a set of four modules, assessment literacy, data literacy, and strategic assessment systems, as well as assessment and action. Uh, the fourth module, um, will include videos, vignettes, and case studies that will be um, showing assessment in action throughout the state of Wisconsin. These uh, modules will be in two formats. One, an e-learning module, where you'll simply be able to log into the site and do the modules independently. And the second will be a formation of a facilitator guide and slideshow that can be used for professional development um, throughout the state in districts, um, CISAs, and educational facilities. The second part of our initiative is a Smart Teach um, application. Um, it's going to be a free online mobile application that is designed to help teachers keep track of their students' learning progress and serve as a planning tool for future instruction. Uh, we are currently um, going into the second pilot of this application, and so if you're interested, please uh, uh, fill out the form as you see linked on the screen. Um, we're hoping to complete uh, this pilot through the end of this first semester and have the application available for your use next spring. Okay, I see one question coming in from Mary. Can we select the 2019 ACT date and work keys now or not yet? Not yet. So if you were to log into Pearson Access Next, you would still see 2018 um, in the upper right-hand corner. So in October, we will work with ACT to roll over that Pearson Access Next portal to 2019, and we'll let you know when PA Next is open and ready for managing participation, which is selecting your 2019 date. And then Janelle also has a question. Janelle for says, for ACT, what will be the return shipping date? The return shipping date. So that's a good question. We don't have the full schedule of events yet, but typically um, there's a window of three or four days that ACT wants you to put those answer documents and materials in the mail, and then it's a week or week and a half when they need to be received at ACT. So maybe you're just thinking about it being a day closer to the weekend. I think in the past we've had until the following Monday to put the materials in the mail. So AC2 will likely give you until the Tuesday. Um, but we will, we will have all those dates um, in the schedule of events. Yeah, so the WIDA screener is um, essentially a slimmed down version of access designed to be a little bit faster and provide a little bit coarser measure of a student proficiency. It works pretty much the same way. If you've got more deep questions, um, you're welcome to shoot me an email or give me a call. My contact info is on the, uh, on the DPI assessment page. But yeah, it works the same way, it's delivered the same way, and the only difference is that it's locally scored for the writing and speaking. Nick asks, is there any discussion of migrating to an online version of the ACT in the future? Um, there is always discussion about that. Um, there are currently no other states that have taken on online testing to scale across the entire state. But we're interested in what you think of that. So I'd be interested to know if your school or district is interested in online, but there is not a firm plan to do that in Wisconsin yet. So far, the data, the, the WSAS data, that's going to be released on October 2nd, Tuesday next week. And that information is included in the first page of the DAC Digest last week. And we will again share that with you today. We probably would suggest just taking a look at the DAC Digest every week and looking at the different sections 
and that should call out all the important information you would need. So there are a couple resources, right? Each and every assessment has a calendar page that provides a checklist of all the important dates. Plus, we also have a monthly list of dates in the new DAC uh, webpage. Uh, plus, how Lauren was saying, because it's a number of dates that you see there, um, with the DAC digest, we will release everything, um, you know, assemble them, assemble them carefully for you for things that are going to be coming in the next couple weeks or the next month. Um, so, the, so the three places you can take a look at it, and the newsletter is the last place where we would also give a look ahead for the next quarter with a list of dates in there as well. All right, looks like we don't have any more questions. Again, if you do have a question, feel free to email the assessment coordinators and they'll be happy to help you. And with that, we hope you have a great day and a great uh, school year, and we will talk to you at the next scheduled OSA Office Hours webinar. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.